Hey, new edition of Bold is Love TV here with James Spooner, director, creator, Afropunk at the Afropunk Festival 2008. James, how you doing, man? I'm good. Good, yeah. good. So, hey, it's been almost a week, one more day. Um, how has it gone this year? It's been phenomenal. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, I really couldn't expect anything better. We, you know, we had like four or five days in the skate park. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's like little kids, pros teaching little mm -hmm. kids how to skate. Um, BMXers doing crazy jumps mm -hmm. and stuff. Awesome bands. The film screenings have been great, you know. And you know, again, going from that age range, like I was helping like a 70 year old lady get down the steps to see a movie. You know? <laughs> so definitely been like multi generational. And um, I think it's been a it's a great idea to make everything outdoors. Wonderful that it could all be free, all ages, you know, so. Yeah. And now, um, one, of the, one of the questions I asked you during your film screening for White Lives Black Sheep was how you've seen the, the scene evolve since you did Afropunk in 04 to now. What's, how, how have you seen it evolve? I mean, certainly, is it getting bigger? Is there, are there more kids coming out of the woodwork? You know, are the Afropunkers being more visible? I mean, what do yeah, you see? I mean, well, I mean, when the, when the film started, there was no scene to speak of, you uh -huh. know, the film really kind of sparked the scene, you know, mm -hmm. by doing doing shows, having screenings at the same time, and really, I mean, it's creating a banner for people to, like, be like, oh, that's, that's what I am, you uh -huh. know, um, and then I think at the same time, like, like, hip-hop is kind of, people are just getting sick of the same old, same old, so, you know, people are looking for new, new directions and stuff, so... Rock music seems to be an obvious um, direction for a lot of right, people. Right. So, um, you know, all these different forces come together and, um, yeah, things are, are growing for sure. You yeah, know? you feel like it's an exciting time for Afropunk, Black Rock, Ghetto Metal, whatever it is you want to yeah, call it. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, now it's, I think, again, like, I think once there's like a label that's like a little... It's in it, like the Afropunk label is not genre specific. Right, right. So you can be into anything really alternative and feel like you can embrace this label. Right, you know? right. You talked about it being a sensibility and an attitude yeah. more than the sound. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I got I got upset with a couple of bands because they were like saying some things that I deemed to be sexist and homophobic, and I'm like, just because you're playing. A, uh, live instruments doesn't make you alternative, you know? This is like a mind state, so, um, and I think the rock bands understand that, um, so it's just a matter of spreading the message all around right. throughout the genres, you know? Right, right. And now where, where do you go from here? You know, I know you're fast at work on films, but where does the Afropunk Festival, the Afropunk movement go from here after a successful week here in New York. Are you taking it on the road? Or? Yeah, I mean, a lot of people have been asking that, and, um, you know, our main sponsor this year was Toyota, who were able to make everything free, basically, um, along with uh, Mount Dew, and um, they're already talking about, you know, putting it on the road, maybe five cities um, next summer. So it's kind of like, you know, nothing's written down in stone mm -hmm. yet. Right. You know? But um, they're very pleased, and as long as they're pleased, then the money comes and we can take it out. Right, 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 right. When right. the means are available, you know. Right. And now, can can you talk a little bit, I don't know, obviously not getting into details, but what was it about Toyota and Mountain Dew that attracted them to Afropunk? Did they ever tell you that they're like, oh, Yeah, wow. I mean, that's clear. It's obvious, you know. They they want they want this demographic. They're looking for, you know, any sponsor gets connected to anything because they want to reach right. the people that you're reaching. So, without any sponsors, we're already reaching, you know, thousands of, of um, folks in the scene. Black folks that they just, you know, uncategorizable you know, black folks, and it's like, oh, there's this whole demographic we didn't know existed, and, <laughs> you know, and so, you know, it, it, it's, it's weird when you start to think, oh, well, you know, uh, the Red Mountain Dew is, um, the Red Mountain Dew is being marketed to black people, you know, and we were like, what? No, we want the Yellow Mountain Dew, just because they said so, you know, it was like, I'll bring it down, and then crazy, you know, put it out, and the, Black kids come up and they're like, 
for the red ones, you know? But, I mean, they know their market, you know? I mean, whatever. Yeah. My, my kids will be drinking water, but, you know. Exactly. Um, but we have that available, and, you know, ultimately, it's just like, you know, the stars want to reach, um, the, the, you know, our audience. Right. And they give us the ability to to give all of this to the audience for free. Right. You know? Right. So, and make it all ages. Mm -hmm. So, in all the previous years, everything's been at least 18 plus. So a lot of the shows are 21 plus. Right. And all of them cost money because we have to pay the bands. Right. You know? Right, right, right. So, you know, we've never walked away with, with a dollar from any of the events. You know, right. it's just about building and hopefully, you know, one day we will. Right. So, this makes it so that, you know, those all of, it's like a win-win situation right. for everybody. Right, 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 right. You so, want to buy a car, hey. That's true. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? One is, one is as good as the next, so right. might as well be one that supports. Right. Right. What's, what's next for James Booner, you know, as a filmmaker? I mean, that seems to be your your passion. Yeah. Uh, beyond, obviously, the Afropunk stuff, what's next for you? Yeah, I mean, for me, I'm really just concentrating on the film stuff, as you said. Um, and uh, I've, I've written a, I've written a script, which I'm starting to get out into like the you know different producers' hands, and and um, I got a couple of I'm doing some editing things, and you know I'm just basically I've been going through the back door of, of filmmaking right. filmmaking community for a few years you know a few years now, and now I'm out in Los Angeles, and I guess I'm trying to put one foot in the front door, one right. foot in the back door, and hopefully I'll be able to meet yeah, somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's great. Well, that's great. Well, James, congratulations. Uh, the great festival. Um, Afropunk.com, right? Yeah, definitely. You can check out Afropunk.com. It's all new, and there's, um, you know, profiles. You can put up music. You can get on the message board. You can do blogs. I mean, it's like, it's you know, it's my space, but it's like our space. Exactly, you know? exactly, exactly. All right, James, well, hey, thanks a lot, and uh, we'll see you soon, all right? Cool, man. Thanks so much. Yeah, man.